Zephaniah chapter 3. Now, Zephaniah is heavy on judgment. And Zephaniah has been talking about, we're going to talk about, Jerusalem and Judah. And we saw that in Jeremiah. We saw Israel in Hosea. If God is this strong on his people, Israel, And as we study these books and we see where the church matches the sin, where countries like America match the sin, I mean, I think some churches, some churches out there, you know, there's going to be no judgment. There's going to be, you know, typically happy to do, happy God will give you everything you And Americans... They're the one of the greatest great nations, all the great of great to be great. And nothing's ever going to happen to America. And they don't even see that America's getting destroyed, America's place. Whoa, oh, there's that whoa. 106 times in the King James Bible. Most of it in Jeremiah. To her, and we're talking about Jerusalem, that is filthy and polluted. That's without television. That's without a movie theater. Without cell phones. And without video games and computers. And they had something, an art gallery or something, that Jeremiah, Jeremiah talks about images on, this, on the wall. You got a city with no electricity. You got altars on every street corner. And gods, and the worship of gods, and high places everywhere in Jerusalem. And God's going to pronounce judgment on his people on Judah. And you have the nerve to think that you and your church are the great, your pastors are great, and nothing's going to happen to you. Or as America, nothing's going to happen to you. And what we don't like about history will just change it. To suit our purpose. To the oppressing city. She obeyed not the voice. Now, I got a paper here. Obey not the voice. Of the prophets. Of the book of Moses. They did not listen to Jeremiah, they gave him a jail. The king took the words that Jeremiah had written by Baruch and burned them on the fire. Go get the originals of them. She received not correction. They told Jeremiah, we're going to go back to the queen of heaven. Because since we have left off the queen of heaven, we've had all want of things. The very fact is these floods in Kentucky and they're harsh. I read a thing today that the global warming, the climate. It's not the climate, it's not global warming, it is God. When you get 
perverted mouth whoopee, God's all for abortion. Lady, shut up. Get off your television program. Get in the kitchen and act like a woman. You know, I just wouldn't have time to, to, to talk on a tell because no man would have them, and they wouldn't even know how to take care of a man in a house. But they go, <laughs> some of you Christians out there watch and listen to them like they knew something. She, the city, trusts not in the Lord. She was established by the Lord. Jerusalem was set upon David. A man after God's heart. We'll get to that in a moment. She drew not near to her God. She drew away from God. You know what the church is? The church is drawn away from God. America was a nation right with God. Yes, she was. She ain't now. All these preachers a couple weeks ago, oh, Roe versus Way, yay! And you see what the chaos, even the Republicans get, you know, the, the, the Savior Republicans. And they're on the other wagon train, you know, we got we to gotta allow sex, same sex people to marry and give them benefits. Amazing how Donald Trump, I haven't seen anything what he feels. Her princes within our roaring lions. Her judges are even wolves. They gnaw not the bones through the morning. In other words, they have so devoured the meat. The bones that are left, there's no meat on them in the morning. Just leave them. The prophets are light and treacherous persons. That sounds like some of the preachers. They're so light, I don't think they wear underwear, I think they even wear panties. Her priests, that'd be the Levites and the false priests. But here the Levites, because they have polluted the sanctuary, and the false priests, because they're false worships in the sanctuary. One of the one of the kings so had the nerve to, to have an altar built that he liked somewhere. And remove the labor over and put his altar. Well, you offer the people on that one, and you offer my offerings on that one. Are you ready? And they have done violence to the law. Uh, so let's look at the kings. Now, never mind the king of Israel, they were all disobedient. Okay, so we look at verse one, chapter 1, verse 1. We go up to Josiah, the son of Amon. We have Rehoboam, well, actually Solomon, who started off right and went and worshipped every god he, his wives did. Rehoboam was disobedient. Abijam, disobedient. Asa, obedient. Jehoshaphat, obedient. Jehoram, disobedient. Azariah, disobedient. But look. Athaliah, the queen, was a murderer. Joash was obedient. Amaziah was obedient. Azariah, or Uzziah, was obedient. Jotham was obedient. Alright, so we have a period of kings doing right. Ahaz, particularly horrible. Hezekiah, completely faithful. Manasseh started off opposite of Solomon. He was wicked, and then he got right. Leaving to his son, here's Amon. Now we're in, now we're in uh, uh, Zephaniah. 
disobedient. Josiah, the one we're in right now, is very faithful. All right, what comes next? Jehoahaz, Jehoahaz, disobedient. Jehoiakim, disobedient. Jehoiakim, disobedient. Zedekiah, disobedient. In comes Babylon. We are at one king who's okay, doing right, and then God said, the rest they're not going to listen. And we got a Catholic president today. The Catholics are against abortion. But they were okay and fine with killing Christians over the Bible. Think about that one for a moment. They were also okay for the Crusaders to go in to Jerusalem and kill in the name of the Pope and God. The president said, you know, abortion's okay, abortion's legal. Allow it. We haven't had one saved president. Don't give me Jimmy Carter, who's Southern Baptist. I was in the Southern Baptist Church. All right, Bush. I read his testimony, but he wasn't really a public. I never heard him once come out and plead the blood of Jesus Christ on television and all that. He didn't give their microphones and the press over to Jesus. And this is the state of Jerusalem. The politics. The priest, the religion. God's men of service. It's wicked. Jeremiah only had two followers. Baruch and that eunuch. The just Lord, right, perfect, is in the midst thereof, the city. He will not do iniquity. God is holy. God is righteous. There are Baptist churches. And they are involved in worldly, comma, paganism, comma, and sin, period. And the preacher, the pastor of that church, will get up himself or call on a church member to ask God to bless the worldliness, comma, the paganism, comma, and or the sin, period, that they're about to take part in. They are inviting God to come and do something the Bible says he won't. Now, there may have been a time that VBS worked. It was great for the children to meet Jesus. 
I've been in two churches with VBS, and it's worldly, it's ungodly, and now you can find any church, including the Catholic Church in part of VBS, where this church is trying to counteract this church with VBS. Oh, this church has VBS this week. We'll have it the week after, and we'll try to make our VBS better than your VBS. Meanwhile, the company that does the VBS is getting rich by selling the same crap. And you got 10 minutes of opening attendance, 10 minutes of closing attendance, 15 minutes of arts and crap, 15 minutes of crackers and juice and sandwiches. They got 15 minutes of uh, uh, award for the 30 minutes of games of the red team and the blue team. Imagine teaching Christians that you ought to be competing with each other when the Bible says we're supposed to be in unity. Oh, five minutes of Bible. And I'll say right now, particularly the most of the VBS and the churches, they don't have a King James Bible. I know a King James Bible, church, everybody knows the pastor, Farley decorated the whole church, everything for their VBS. And I got kicked out of that church because I called the pastor on it. And I did was, we walked in the church, saw the mess, turned around and went to the car. I got on the way home. I got a I got a text message. I told him, "Listen, we'll be back in next week when the, when that's all over with." And I got the text. I got somewhere in my email file. Don't bother coming back. I've got a church where where the youth pastor gets up there, and they got the kid drinking out of pretend to drink whiskey and, and booze out of little red cups. They think it's funny. Lord forbid some of the other youth pastors have been teaching their children. Then they turn around and say, oh, God bless this iniquity. God says, you're making me sick. And God is standing outside the door knocking. Every morning does he bring his judgment to light. There are some people who don't wake up in the morning. There's some people they get up in the morning and their sins have caught up with them. He faileth not. The world wants him to fail. The world wants him to close. We read the other night, God will do good, God will not do God and good, and God will not do evil. God just won't do nothing at all. That's a failure, God. That's a God who won't reward those that love him. That's a God who, you're involved in sin and all that. We'll say, well, God doesn't do it with all this iniquity, all these sins. He doesn't, he doesn't send fire down from heaven and he don't blow them up. Yeah, but there is a judgment coming. That's what the churches forget to teach. That's what people are not looking forward to. A man has bribed his way and he has conned his way through the, through the justice system. And is let go and double jeopardy and all that. Can't get me and all that. And he walks out of the way. Think he's doing just perfect fun. One day he's going to stand before the judge of all the world. He's going to reach for his wallet. And he ain't got no back pocket. He ain't got no pocket at all. 
And there'll be pastors, grace pastors, at the judgment seat of Christ. They're going to turn around and walk away from that judgment with nothing but a dustpan and ashes in one of them little brooms. With his congregation looking on with their jaws down to the ground. You are a great pastor. And then they'll be shocked to see New Jerusalem come down. You mean that's not our church building that we were we built? The lawn that we cut? The blue carpet we fought over? It's not our church building coming down. It's not gonna be our pastor up and we all the world be oh our great oh their great pastor. But the unjust knoweth no shame. There are people who are in jail today, serious, wicked, vile, raunchy crimes, guilty by a judge and by a peer of their jury. And they had opportunity to go out and do it all over again. They'll go out even add. There, there are criminals in the justice system they will tattoo on themselves little teardrops of every person they kill. And see how many teardrops the tattoo. And they brag about it. One more, I'll have a hundred. There are spouses that are cheating on their wives or husbands and they go to church and they only blink an eye or turn a red. There are treasurers in the church stealing money. There are pastors having an affair. Southern Baptists What's the Southern Baptist do? Sweep it under the carpet till somebody reveals it. The Catholic Church shows no shame that their priests have had sexual relations with the altar boy. Just move the priest to another location and keep them out of the news. Did a study yesterday about the incense. In the family. And there are people who have no shame what they do to their children. The media has no shame for the garbage they fill your head with. The politicians have no shame that they've lied to you, lied to you, lied to you. And you put them in office and they lie. That major corporation, that salesman, they sell you that crap. You're stuck with the crap. You go to court and the judge says, I can't do nothing. Their lawyers have worded it so that they protected themselves. You're, you got crap and they don't care. I have cut off the nation. Plural. So if God has dealt with his city, he did with Babylon, he will with the Antichrist, then he turns to the nations, plural. You not know the judgment of God will begin at the house of the Lord? Like Jesus told the disciples, Jerusalem, Smyrna, outer parts of the world, judgment will begin at Jerusalem, Smyrna, and the outer parts of the world. Their towers are desolate. I made their streets waste. You know, if you've been listening to me, you know what those cities are. 
that none passes by. There's nobody in the streets. There's no one where those cities are. God dealt with them to the fullest. They're right now in Albuquerque, however you say it. They're gathering the fish from the river to save the fish because the river's drying up. Come on, Native Americans, do your rain dance. Come on, you politician Republicans, bring the rain. Come on, Al Gore, with, with your speak about with this global warming, all your 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 goonies. Bring the rain. Keep saying it's Mother Nature. Keep saying it's El Nima. Keep saying it's global warming. Don't get on your knees. Don't repent to God. It ain't gonna get you ain't gonna get better. Go read it. Go and do it through our study of Jeremiah. So that there is no man. That there is none that happened. Where are the people that live in Sodom and Gomorrah? Babylon. Nineveh. They speak about old degree. Where is the Old Testament? I mean, excuse me. Where is the New Testament biblical Greek person, man? If you have that Greek, the Greeks today that would not even hardly understand your biblical Greek. They don't speak that Greek no more. I said, surely thou will fear me. That's God saying. Fear the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Depart from sin is the understanding. They don't understand God because they, they don't want to depart from their evil. They want to do more evil. They want to kill more babies. They want to have more satellite relations. They want to get your children involved. They want to lie more to you. They want to sin, sin, sin. And the churches, oh, you know, we're not getting many people in. What can we do to bring more people in? What can we do to bring them in? Bring them in. Let them bring their world of sin. So their dwelling shall not be cut off. If they had feared God, Babylon never came. If they had honored God and listened to God, Assyria would never have came. But see, the problem is, if they had listened to God, they would still be in the Garden of Eden today. I guess Adam first, he wasn't deceived, and Eve, they didn't fear God too well. They would have to listen. There would be no changing of the Bible by Eve. If she really feared God. I mean, can you think about, let's say Eve did, and she did, she changed the Word of God. She was the first Bible corrector. What if, what if that would have been the main intentions of the serpent? And like, ha ha, okay, see you guys later. And then God would have shown up. Eve, get over here. 
Actually, she wasn't called Eve yet. Mrs. Adam, get over here. What are these words? What on earth did you do with my word? And you want to know how many Baptist churches today don't follow the King James Bible? That are not the word of God? They can't even get by Genesis chapter 3. You don't have the word of God. You don't fear God. I forget the king's name. The one that took the, the role written out of the mouth of the inspiration of Jeremiah by the inspiration of God. Burned it on the... He didn't fear God. And they pleaded with the king not to do it. They feared God. To a point. Howsoever I punish them. Alright, let's put it where we actually name it by, by event. Look at all the plagues upon Pharaoh in Egypt. And he never got right. Not once. Beginning with the water turned to blood. And what God did for his people over and over, Jews require a sign. The whole book of Judges. God sent the enemy to correct them, to punish them, and then they cry, and God sent them a deliverer. When the deliverer died, they went right back to their sin. And God sent another enemy. And at the close of the book of Judges, every man did that which is right in his own eyes. History repeats itself. COVID-19, that year we had all those hurricanes. Denmark, the nation or the country of water, is now lacking water. I read the other day, Las Vegas and New Mexico, I believe it was, had 10 days of drinking water left. Massive floodings in Kentucky. Nevada will want the water that's in Kentucky. Kentucky makes bourbon. They have inbreeding, inbreeding, intermarriage of families in Kentucky. What's the Kentucky Derby going to do to help you? Everything that's going on worldwide, not just America. Whatever I do for them, whatever I do to them, whatever punishment God is doing today, we got to offer to El Nemo. We got to offer to Mother uh, Mother Nature. We got to offer to Mother Earth. We got to offer to global warming. We got to have another summit. Everything but God. But they rose up early and corrupted all their doings. You see that rose up early? Abraham, yes. I want you to take your son, your only son, Isaac, yep. I want you to take him to the spot and I want you to offer him sacrifice for me. 
And Abraham rose up early in the morning. Did you read that about the Old Testament saints that walked with God? They rose up early in the morning and they went about to do what God told them to do. And we are at a point right now in Zephaniah. They rise up early to corrupt themselves. And they will be doing it till they go to bed. Is the world going to get right now? Nope. Will there be a revival? I believe there will be a revival of an individual, of a family, and of a church here and there and over there. Big corporate kind of thing. I know the church, oh, we're going to pray for revivals. Every church you pass by, you pray for that church. You mean a church that's enemy of God? You mean a church that lies about the dignity, the deity of Jesus Christ? You mean the church that says that Jesus and Lucifer are brothers? You know what that says about God? The Father? You mean the church that has persecuted and killed Christians? And in your church, you don't even know what Bible you want to use. You can bring whatever Bible you want. And, uh, you know, the president this 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 year, well, I, I prefer this one. We are messed up. You, you ought to take a scripture and write it on every door of every light of the scene church age today. And it'd be Revelation chapter 3, begin onto the church of Laodicea. All the way down, I think it's chapter 3, I don't know what verse it is. There is no great church this day and period. There's no great pastor this great day and period. We, as Christians, are living the time and period that Judah lived in Jeremiah's time. That simple. Zephaniah. Are you faithful to your church? When's the last time your church, your pastor, all right, open your Bibles to Zephaniah as we. They don't even open Bibles in the churches today. I can tell you a pastor doesn't even bring his Bible to the podium. I thought it was bad when people didn't bring a Bible to church. I thought it was bad when people are in church and sitting there in church, there's a pulpit, I mean, uh, there, there's a pew Bible there. They don't even use that one. Friend, to have a pastor get up and not have his Bible. And not even know what Bible he's quoting from. We would learn from, from, from Judah because we are in the days of Judah. 